Hi, Andrew here from The Chopping Block. So I've been doing these gel tests for a while, and sometimes I get some questions that indicate that a person might not quite understand what the purpose of gel testing is for, and why we do it, and what we're looking for. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at a load that's pretty well documented, that shouldn't give us any surprises or anything, but we're looking at it not so much to see what happens, but so that I can point out the parts of the gel test and what's important and why we do it. The load that we're gonna be looking at is 223, 77 grain Sierra Match King. We're gonna shoot it out of a 16 inch AR-15. Okay, so like I said, there's not really any surprises there. That's pretty much what we expected to see. But what are we looking at? Well, to start with, the appearance of a wound in gel isn't intended to simulate the appearance of a wound in tissue. Gel is far less elastic than tissue. So while tissue may stretch very far and then return back to its normal shape, gel will tear a lot more easily. Now at pistol velocities, you'll see some tearing in the gel from the temporary stretch cavity. That should be entirely disregarded. Rifle velocities, like this test, there's also tearing, much more dramatic tearing in the gel, but that tearing is more dramatic in the gel than it would be in tissue. So we're not really looking at it as a representation of the wound, but it is useful to compare one cartridge to another in terms of the size of the temporary stretch cavity. Because at rifle speeds, that temporary stretch cavity can contribute to wounding. The tissue does tear, just not as extensively as the gelatin does. Now the first thing that we look at as the bullet is passing through the block is the neck. That's the area where the bullet is starting to pass through the gel, but it hasn't started to expand or fragment or yaw or really upset the tissue much. So it's a relatively undisturbed portion of the track in the gel. Generally speaking, the shorter that is, the better. A cartridge like M855 can produce six, eight, even 14 inch long necks. Obviously, that could result in the bullet completely exiting the body before it really starts to upset much. A load like this has a relatively short neck. That's a good thing, assuming that we reach adequate penetration. The main thing that we're looking for in a gel test isn't that the appearance of the wound simulates the wound in tissue, it's those empirical hard numbers, those measurements of penetration, expansion, fragmentation, retained weight, and properly prepared and calibrated 10% ordnance gelatin produces those measurements, penetration, expansion, fragmentation, retained weight, that correlate very strongly with observed wounds in actual shooting victims. The next thing that we'll look at as the bullet passes through the block is the size of the temporary stretch cavity. Those tears aren't exactly representative of what you would see in tissue, but they are useful comparing one load to another load. The size of that temporary stretch cavity does matter for rifle cartridges. It should be entirely ignored for handgun cartridges though. We'll also look at the degree to which fragments disperse, the size of the fragments, how far they made it into the wound track. Then we'll look at the ultimate penetration of the core of the projectile and how much retained weight there is. We can look at the appearance of the projectile, weigh it, measure it. We can gather a lot of empirical data about the performance of a cartridge in gelatin. Again, the appearance, not very important, but that data matters. The biggest thing, the most important thing, is that Properly prepared and calibrated 10% ordnance gelatin gives us penetration figures that match up very closely with real human tissue. Now clear gel also mimics real gelatin fairly well. There are some instances, especially with higher velocity rifle cartridges, that the penetration figures can be substantially off, but it's an approximation of an approximation. It has its place, it's useful. 
And that brings us to the fact that this type of video, like what I'm doing right now, what you see on other YouTube channels, it's informal testing. While it's useful, it's entertaining, of course, and it can be useful for you to decide, hey, that's a cartridge that's worth looking into, or that's a load that is entirely gimmick BS that I should stay away from. You shouldn't use it as any sort of conclusive indication. You look at an informal test like I do, and you, and you make initial judgments and then do some more research and look at real professional testing. If you think I got something wrong or if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below. We'll also leave some reference material in the description. Please go ahead and read the reference material. It'll help out a great deal. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope it answered some questions for you, and that most of all, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're curious about how I make these videos, head on over to my channel. I did a video, sort of behind the scenes thing, where I had a friend follow me around with a camera while I set up this test. It might sound a little arrogant, but actually a lot of people ask me how I set all these things up, and the best way to answer the question is just to show you. I hope you guys have a great day.